Welcome to Eagle Harbor's Sustainability Outreach and Educational Workshop Series, funded by Prince George's County, Maryland, and the Department of Environment, under the Stormwater Stewardship Program and Chesapeake Bay Trust. Today's workshop is workshop number three, Building Community Resilience Through Climate Action, provided by Environmental Finance Center. Our guest speaker is Brandy Espinola, Climate and Sustainability Program Director with Sustainable Maryland. Welcome and thank you for joining us. This evening we will be discussing climate change and how the residents in the town of Eagle Harbor can take action. My name is Brandy Espinola and I am the Climate and Sustainability Program Director at the University of Maryland Environmental Finance Center. At UMD EFC, one of the programs that I help manage is the Sustainable Maryland program. This program is a free and voluntary program for communities that want to go green and save green. We help communities understand what types of actions they can take to become more sustainable. We help improve access to resources and we help them track progress towards and gain recognition for achieving their sustainability goals. We have a number of communities in Prince George's County who participate in this program. Of the 27 municipalities in Prince George's County, 26 are registered, including the town of Eagle Harbor. Of those, three are silver certified and 13 are bronze certified. So the Sustainable Maryland program really offers a menu of actions, allowing communities to choose activities specific to their needs and plan across community priorities to achieve multiple community benefits. For climate action, which is the main topic of this evening's discussion, there are a number of actions on the action menu that you might be interested in taking. So for example, there are a number of actions under the energy category, including conducting municipal energy audit, uh, completing a residential energy efficiency program, or other creative solutions. Town of Eagle Harbor might even consider developing a climate uh, action plan or con uh, completing a municipal carbon footprint or community carbon footprint in order to track their emissions. There are a number of other actions on the action menu uh, that fall under climate actions, including some under planning and land use and others under natural resources that could help build the community's resilience to the climate change impacts. But what is climate change? So climate change, also known as global warming, occurs when carbon dioxide and other air pollutants collect in the atmosphere and absorb sunlight and solar radiation that have bounced off the Earth's surface. Normally, this radiation would escape into space, but these pollutants, which can last for years to centuries in the atmosphere, trap the heat and cause the planet to get hotter. These heat-trapping pollutants, specifically carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, water vapor, and synthetic fluorinated gases, are known as greenhouse gases, and their impact is called the greenhouse effect. Though natural cycles and fluctuations have caused the Earth's climate to change several times over the last 800,000 years, our current era of global warming is directly attributable to human activity, specifically to our burning of fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, gasoline, and natural gas, all of which result in the greenhouse gas effect. Again, there is widespread consensus amongst the scientific community. The facts have been known for at least five decades. Human emissions such as burning of fossil fuels, deforestation, and even our agricultural processes are all responsible for the rapid increase in greenhouse gas uh, emissions, specifically CO2, all of which are accelerating the greenhouse gas effect and leading to global warming. And this matters because it really does change the types of climate hazards that we are going to be facing. We will see ex more extreme heat and drought, increased riverine flooding and severe storm flooding, the uh, coastal flooding from sea level rise, increased hurricanes, increased tornadoes, potentially severe winds, winter blizzards, uh, and even additional thunderstorms. So in Maryland, Maryland summer, summer high temperatures have warmed about two degrees Fahrenheit since 1970. 
So this isn't even talking about projections. This is looking at historically what has happened. In Maryland, we are already feeling the effects of climate change. Almost every year I have given one of these presentations, I'm able to say that this year we have had uh, excessive and unprecedented heat. heat. So by late this century with current emission levels, the Northeast, including Maryland, will have warmer winters by about eight to 12 degrees, shorter winters by at least one to two weeks, and hotter summer conditions will, uh, will arrive three weeks earlier. So to put that in perspective, um, where we would may normally maybe have some nice uh, spring, uh, a pretty temperate uh, summer, and a lovely fall season, we can expect as the temperature rises to have seasons and have heat closer to that of far Texas. And so if you're someone who really appreciates having um, you know, your seasons in Maryland, this is gonna be coming as a pretty big shock as time continues. So in Maryland, as I mentioned before, we already we are already feeling the effects of climate change. We have seen an increase in excessive heat days, which impacts air quality and poses increasing problems for human health, especially in urban areas such as heat stress, cardiovascular failure, and even increased incidence of kidney failure due to dehydration. By twenty by twenty fifty, the typical number of heat wave days in Maryland is projected to quadruple for more than 10 to approximately 40 days a year. We have also seen an increase in flooding with historic and unprecedented flooding becoming a common occurrence in and near Prince George's County. These local impacts devastate our communities, put vulnerable populations at risk, stress our local economy, strain our livelihoods, and threaten our community's health and well-being. And so it is because of that that it's super important to take climate action. What are some of the benefits of climate action? Well, one, it could be an opportunity to create jobs within a community. It could help lower energy bills and make energy more affordable. It can reduce high energy burdens, on, specifically on low-income households as we transition to cleaner, more renewable energy. And as I mentioned before, uh, climate change has a really bad impact on our air quality. And so, Taking climate action can help improve health by reducing harmful pollutants in the air around your community. Overall, you know, climate action can help promote healthier, active lifestyles. It can reduce greenhouse gas emissions and can, and can create uh, additional climate resilience within your community. So it's important for us to start thinking about what sort of actions we can take to help mitigate the effects of climate, of, of the effect of climate change. So we're gonna take a couple minutes here and talk a little bit about what the county uh, and what the state is doing in terms of climate action. At the state level, the Climate Solutions Now Act is arguably the most ambitious climate change law adopted by any state in the country. The act calls for Maryland to reduce greenhouse gases by 60% compared to, to a 2006 baseline by 2031, and for the Maryland economy to reach net zero emissions by 2045. The act includes extensive provisions dealing with environmental justice, worker transition, state procurement, nuclear power, biofuels, schools and school buses, and other topics. Just this summer, in June 2023, Maryland released the Maryland's Climate Pathway Report, which charts actions every sector can take to achieve the state's ambitious greenhouse gas reduction goals. By the end of the year, the Maryland Department of Environment is expected to have developed a draft plan for achieving the 2031 goal, taking the strategies outlined in the pathway report and creating a strategy for achieving results. So again, the goal of the Climate Solutions Now Act is to um, see that by 2031, we have a 60% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions with net zero emissions being reached by 2045. Incredibly ambitious goals. And so the act also includes the establishment of four new working groups. Um, the Maryland uh, Commission on Climate Change has had the greenhouse gas mitigation, adaptation and response, education, uh, communication and outreach, and science and technical um, working groups. But now they're going to add three or uh, four additional working groups. 
Uh, the act added the Just Transition Employment and Retraining Working Group, the Energy Industry Re Revitalization, Energy Resilience and Efficiency, and the Solar uh, Photovoltaic System Recovery, Reuse, and Recycling Working Groups. And so with these additional working groups, the idea is that folks from all over the state will be working on trying to figure out how to achieve the goal within the act and help the state of Maryland become more climate ready. So there are a couple of uh, specific topics that are addressed in the Maryland Climate Solutions Now Act that we think will have an impact on local government such as the town of Eagle Harbor. So the first is dealing with buildings. So within the Climate Solutions Now Act, there's a number of different um, uh, references strategies that are being identified, including building electrification, um, starting something called building benchmarking and energy performance standards, and making sure, and, and that's really to make sure that people are um, reporting uh, their emissions starting in 2025 uh, and just um, instituting a modest fee beginning in 2025. 30 for buildings that fail to reduce direct emissions by 20% compared to average buildings of that type. So there are these sort of regulations that will be coming on online as we move forward uh, that local governments might, might want to pay attention to and, and may need to comply with. Uh, counties that build net zero schools would receive an additional 5% increase in the state contribution to that project. And so that's an incentive uh, to increase the efficiencies of the buildings that the county is building. Um, there's also a program for new school buses uh, purchased by counties, uh, which says that all new school buses purchased by the counties must be zero emission vehicles, unless the county can demonstrate that there were no federal, state, or private funding sufficient to cover the incremental cost of the zero emission buses. So again, this is sort of the carrot that they're helping they're hoping will help to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the transport, transportation sector. Um, and so I mentioned this before, there's gonna be a new working group specifically dedicated to environmental justice um, for the climate justice. And so the act requires the Commission on the Environmental Justice to establish goals for the percentage of state funding that will be used for these communities and to develop strategies for reducing greenhouse gases and co-pollutant emissions in those communities. So starting on January 1, 2030, uh, based on the Climate Solutions Now Act, at least 75% of all uh, electricity supply purchased by Maryland for state facilities must come from a no or low carbon energy sources. So these are all just really big goals uh, that we are working through with regards to the Climate Solutions Now Act um, that are, while happening from the state level, will certainly impact local level decisions and communities such as your own. In addition to the state level actions uh, that certainly have a direct effect on local governments, uh, there are also a number of jurisdictions that are already leading the way in terms of climate action. Uh, so uh, in the DC metro area, the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments um, has established their own regional goals and their goals are 50% emissions reductions below the 2005 levels uh, by 2030. Um, and then making sure that the region becomes climate ready by 2030 as well. In the state of Maryland, there are a number of different jurisdictions that have already started leading the way, including the uh, Frederick County, Montgomery County, the city of Bowie, city of Frederick, city of Greenbelt, city of Rockville, and the city of Tacoma Park. So you can see that there are a number of different jurisdictions who are leading the way in the climate action discussion. And in Prince George's County, the County Council adopted a climate action plan in 2022. So the Prince George's County's climate action plan is an urgent call to action. It urges the county government to take immediate action to implement policies, programs, and strategies that will meet the challenge of the global climate challenge change. Climate change will require fundamental changes at all levels of society and governance in how to generate energy, transport ourselves, design buildings, and manage natural resources. So Prince George's County is looking at this as an opportunity to not only protect the community from the impacts of a changing climate, but also to be a proactive leader in modeling the transition to a carbon neutral and climate ready future. 
to guide the climate action planning effort and the development of their priority recommendations, the Climate Action Commission adopted a set of guiding principles. These principles serve as a guidepost, helping ensure that the recommended actions are consistent with the community's goals and values. And so the CAP has a sector-based green, starts with a uh, sector-based greenhouse gas emissions inventory that shows the county emissions that come from four primary sources, transportation fuel use, residential energy use, commercial energy use, and other emitting sector, uh, sectors. The transportation sector has consistently been the most significant contrib contributor to Prince George's County's greenhouse gas emissions in each reporting year since 2005, making up roughly 48% of the total greenhouse gas emissions in the county in 2018. The second largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions in 2018 was residential building energy use, followed closely by commercial building energy use, which make up 23 and 22% of the total county emissions respectively. The remaining 7% of emissions comprise of all other emitting sectors evaluated, including processes and fugitive emissions, such as leaky gas pipes, uh, waste, agriculture, and water treatment. Um, those are all just gonna be making up 7% of the overall emissions. So the cap really lays out again, sort of where are the biggest greenhouse gas emissions so that the county can make their uh, choices on how to reduce emissions strategically based off of where the most emissions are coming from. The county cap also has a discussion on the county's climate change risks and vulnerabilities. With increasing more extreme weather events, like the unprecedented flooding, prolonged periods of extreme heat, record-breaking snow that we had a couple of years ago, and a series of severe storms that have occurred over the past five years alone, it is important to understand that these trends are going to keep accelerating and understand the potential risks to residents and infrastructure in the future. So this section summarizes the most significant climate hazards and trends likely to impact the county to help the leaders make informed decisions about future investments. And then there's, the action, there's a section on taking action. Each action area includes a discussion of the broad strategies the county believe are necessary to achieve climate mitigation and adaptation in Prince George's County. Perhaps more important than these broad strategies are the specific priority recommendations proposed within each area. These actionable recommendations are the steps that are believed to yield the greatest impact and over which county government has a high degree of influence. Most of these recommendations could be implemented within three to five years with sufficient funding and government capacity. So in the Climate Action Plan, the county specifically highlighted 26 priority recommendations. These are strategies with particularly important co-benefits in three categories. The first is strategies that advance both mitigation and adaptation, strategies in which Prince George's County is asked to lead by example, and strategies that specifically emphasize equity and inclusion. So if you look across the 26 priority recommendations, you'll see that these different co-benefits are interwoven throughout. There are three categories of priority recommendations. Uh, one is the operational actions, and these bring about transformational change within and beyond county government. Next, we have mitigation actions to help reduce our county's greenhouse gas emissions. These immediate recommendations represent uh, the county's contribution, uh, contribution to preventing the worst effects of climate change and doing their part to mitigate uh, global warming. And last but not least is these uh, priority recommendations that deal with adaptation. These immediate recommendations represent the county's contribution to preventing the worst effects of climate change. And again, these are gonna be local solutions that help protect residents and infrastructure within the county. So if you want to dig into the county's climate action plan, plan or look at the Climate Solutions Now app to really better understand what's happening at the state and local level. Uh, the resources can be made available to you. Um, there's certainly a lot of details there about what sort of strategies and actions should be taken, uh, what that means looking, look, what does that look like moving forward, and, and certainly goes into great detail uh, around the uh, county and state plans. But, 
So that is what the county is doing and that's what the state is doing thus far. But what can you do as a resident of Eagle Harbor? So there are several actions that we can all take. Uh, take at home uh, to help reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions and become more climate resilient. So the first is to reduce consumption, right? Think about unsubscribing to catalogs, going paperless, and avoiding single-use plastics. The less we consume, the more we can reduce our consumption, uh, the less energy we're using, and the less greenhouse gases we're emitting. Again, right? So the part of reducing consumption is rethinking what you purchase to begin with, right? You might want to buy more eco-friendly products and brands or eat more plant-based food or choose green power. So there are a number of things you could do uh, in terms of your purchasing power. Um, you can also transition in any investments you might have to companies that prioritize uh, environmental, social, and governance factors. Uh, this will oftentimes uh, be company, you know, investing in ESG um, companies uh, certainly will help you know that your funds are going towards uh, organizations that really are going to be more climate conscious, more environmentally conscious. And then you can always advocate for governments to make climate change and the environment a priority. This might look like you're working with the town of Eagle Harbor, Harbor to, to pass a climate action plan or working with the county um, to uh, encourage them to um, commit to action where, where their climate action plan is, is um, concerned. And so really, you know, using your voice and your community's voice to advocate for government action is always a good thing you can do from home. There are other things that you could do. If you're a homeowner, you can make sure your home has adequate insulation and that energy saving windows are being used. You have programmable thermostats for more efficient heating and cooling. Uh, and of course, energy saving light bulbs for more efficient lighting. So this is uh, insulating the building envelope to make sure that you are able to use less energy and waste less electricity. Uh, you could certainly buy Energy Star appliances uh, when your appliances um, come to the end of their useful life. And then, of course, buying longer lasting, more efficient light bulbs can really pay off over time and it reduces your electricity usage, which ultimately lowers your greenhouse gas emissions. So over a 23 year period, it will cost you over $200. Uh, and many trips to the hardware store to keep one 60 watt lamp lit with an incandescent bulb bulbs. But by comparison, it would cost just $48 using a handful of CFLs or 38 using a single LED light bulb, a savings from of more than $150 either way. And so really consider you know, your next light bulb purchase and how you can make that more energy efficient. Uh, conserving water also helps you save energy. Uh, in order to utilize water, in order to uh, heat up water, we use tons of energy, which requires, um, or which often, you know, again, unless you're using renewable energy, is going to be creating greenhouse gas emissions. And so conserving water will help you reduce your use of energy as well. Uh, the average household uh, could save more than 2,900 gallons per year by installing water sense labeled shower heads. Uh, since these water savings will reduce demand on water heaters, households will also save energy, as I mentioned. Uh, and again, and in fact, a household could save enough to power its television use for about a year. Okay. There are other options like choosing renewable energy. Uh, choosing renewable energy over fossil fuels is a great way to stop climate change and doing your part in making things happen. So you could install solar panels uh, for solar hot water heating, or you could install solar panels on your roof uh, for energy, for electricity. Uh, you can also explore options for getting tax credits from the government in order to install solar panels. Um, and if you can't install solar panels on your own property, you could certainly um, work with your utility company to pay for solar or renewable energy through your utility company. You could uh, buy into a community solar project, uh, or there are a number of other ways you can ensure that you are getting your energy uh, from renewable sources. 
Another thing you can do to take climate action is to take advantage of Prince George's County's rain check rebate programs to manage your stormwater. So as we mentioned, with climate change, we're going to have more and more uh, storm events, which is going to lead towards flooding and all sorts of issues you, uh, in your backyard. So consider getting uh, installing a rain garden or think about using conservation landscaping practices, uh, install permeable pavers, um, or just remove the pavers entirely. You can install a cistern or rain barrels or create a green roof. All of these are great uh, strategies that could help you uh, capture some rainwater, uh, certainly helps reduce pollution to the bay, um, but also is a way of making your house and your community just a little bit more climate resilient. You can also consider planting a garden if you're looking for actions that have a climate effect. So planting a garden uh, can have a number of varietal, can have a variety of different benefits for you and your community. Um, so of course, you know, supplying some of your own food and developing a better understanding of what farmers experience by connecting with uh, your planet can help to reduce emissions because you're not having to bring it from so far away and can help you really encourage uh, local farmers um, and support them. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, also, you know, starting a garden can help you use less of your lawn area, uh, which means you're gonna be mowing your lawn less uh, so the grasses stay taller. You can plant native wildflowers, trees and grasses in your areas. So you don't have to use as much. Ooh, I am sorry. You so you don't have to use as much uh, water, so that you can certainly um, help retain more water during storm events on your property, um, and it really just helps to absorb that water. And then, of course, as you're thinking of climate action you could always shift your mode of transportation. This might look like taking the bus more frequently or riding your bike. It could be transitioning to electric vehicles or making sure that you walk as many times as you can. And then one of the best things that you can do in terms of climate change uh, today is to really get involved in your community and really get involved in uh, sort of how the county, the state, uh, even at the national level, right, like getting involved in what's happening around climate change, becoming knowledgeable, um, and really making sure that uh, your voice is heard and that you're participating in the process. Uh, letting folks know that you support climate action from the county level is certainly helpful. Um, and and uh, showing up as volunteers to help uh, share the important information can also be a great way to know, get to know your community, to get to know your neighbors, and, and share some very important information. So that is all I have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me um, at my email address, or you can give me a phone call. Uh, you can also visit the Sustainable Maryland website if you're looking for some other ideas about actions that the town of Eagle Harbor could take in order to be more climate uh, friendly and think about how to become more resilient. Uh, you could join the Sustainable Maryland mailing list if you'd like to receive newsletters from us. We oftentimes showcase projects that are happening across the state um, and provide ideas for actions that can uh, help improve your sustainability and make you more climate resilient. And as always, please follow us on Facebook. And again, through that platform, we'll share events and news information. So stay tuned, stay connected. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, it was a pleasure chatting with you this evening. We thank you so much for your time. Uh, and I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you for joining the Town of Eagle Harbor's workshop series number three. Please stay tuned for our future workshops. Workshop number four will be on August the 31st, subject matter, Sustainable Maryland, how to become a sustainable community. Workshop number five will be on September the 14th, Small Systems, presented by the Environmental Finance Center. And finally, workshop number six, the date to be announced 
Prince George's County Department of Environment.